Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is wonderful to be on the air one more time with the broadcast Contending for the Faith. We are thankful for you. We appreciate God for one more day. Today, we will be talking about the perverted gospel. Our text will be found in Galatians 1 and 8. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. This is Contend for the Faith. I'm your host, your honored host, Evangelist Sabrina White. Let's start with our introduction. The Bible is filled with grave warnings against tampering with the Word of God. There is warning given through Moses. There is warning given through John. That's Deuteronomy 4 and 2, Revelations 22 and 18 and 19. And perhaps the most strongest warning was that what I just read to you. When we look at the word perverted as in a biblical t- context of the word, there's a word that says metrostropho. <clears throat> metrostropho means to turn around. And there's other words that that follow it as well. It's apostropho diastropho and extropho and the all of these word means the turning i think james says that your laughter james 4 now your laughter turned into mourning acts was said acts 220 just give these examples i'm just giving you examples the sun shall turn into darkness so when we use the word perverted, which these words mean, the biblical that I just got through uh, sharing with you, is when people have turned the gospel into something else, you know, like laughter into mourning, uh, the uh, sun shall be turned into darkness. So it's turned into something totally other than its original state or its original meaning or its original purpose. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about perverted. Perverted means to, yes, to turn into something else, to turn away. So we want to talk about that today because there's a lot of gospels today, popular gospels, that I really want to cover since the gospel was preached. As I said earlier, since the gospel had been preached, it has been often perverted to teaching something different than proclaimed by the apostles. Um, some at that time, even in um, Jesus' day, after he had died on the cross and after Pentecost, some was teaching that you could still have to be circumcised and keeping the law. Well, um, and that's found in Acts 5, 15, 1 and 6. Others they distressed a similar dark of salvation through meritorious works. You know, you can just work and get your way in. And even today, people are perverting the gospel, often in an extreme dark of salvation by saying, you know, if you just work and you just do this. God understand, you can buy this, you can build homes, and you can help. It's good that we have works, but we, but I want you to know that works does not save us. Then there's a gospel that says uh, salvation by faith only. You just believe in, believe in Jesus, and that's all it takes. You don't have to get baptized. You don't have to do anything. You just know that Jesus died for your sins, and you just believe that he is the Son of God, sent from heaven, came to die, and you're fine. So this lesson is, I want to address these perverted gospels as often presented in our today's time, and I want it to contrast to the gospel that's preached by Jesus and his apostles. Again, I want to contrast what we're talking about in today's time, the popular mainstream perverted gospels. And we're just going to contrast that what Jesus and the apostles has taught. The message of the perverted gospel, the errors, is in telling one how 
to receive Christ. We receive Christ by personal invitations, Revelations 3.20. It is true that Christ personally invite us to him. In Revelation 3.20 is an invitation to wayward Christians, not alien sinners. Um, Fair you to note the context uh, leads to a perversion of the gospel as well. You can receive Christ right now through prayer. Then receive him in your life by simple act of faith. And there's more to it than that. But that's what the mainstream um, uh, a false teaching uh, and someone that lack understanding and can't rightly divide the word that is what people are the errors of how to receive Christ so they're saying through prayer just 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 you know just just um, say this certain prayer and you're saved um, in prayer it says in prayer you can tell God that you're a sinner. And that's the sinner prayer that most people um, say. People are often told to pray, Lord Jesus, I need you. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior. And Lord, thank you for forgiving my sins. Take control of, take control of the throne of my life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Now... While this sounds innocent, it's saying this in saying the sinner's prayer, or it's, it's saying what they uh, term as the sinner's deem as the sinner's prayer. How we are to receive Jesus in our lives, saying this is like a form, this is salvation. When they say this prayer and say, Okay, now you're saved. Many pastors, evangelists, crusade, mega meeting leaders, um. They lead sinners into these prayers. They teach that God loves them but hate the sin. Well, in with this prayer, that makes the sinner feel okay. Okay, he does love me. I have invited him into my heart. So they say they let him know. Okay, he loves you. So you can no, he don't want you to change. Just you know, keep telling God about your sins. You know, he understand. He know you, you, who you're going to sin. He know you in the flesh. That's why he died on the cross. So if you sin, it's fine. You don't have to change. You know, just come to church and be faithful. And, you know, we'll teach you other things. But we already led you to. But well, that's a form of gospel. That's a form of gospel that they have doctrinized uh, as salvation, as to coming to Christ. And we know there's only one Lord one faith, one baptism. We only we only go by what Jesus teaches, okay? So that's that's false, that's a perverted gospel. And that's one that people use over and over again. We know that it is Satan wants to keep through a lot of religions, through a lot of teaching, he keeps um sinners confused. You know, it, just, it sounds good, it works good. If a sinner know that they're a sinner, they know they have to give up something. But the enemy comes with this Lord prayer to just give him, put Jesus on the throne of your heart. He loves you the way you are. And now you're saved. You don't have to be baptized. You don't have to be through the Holy Ghost. You don't have to live holy. You know, because the Lord understands. So this is a perverted gospel. This is a attorney making something into something that is not like I gave the examples earlier in Acts. How that the sun was turned into darkness and how the uh, the weeping will be turned into laughter. So they have turned the word of God and have uh, made these things into something that shouldn't be. Um, I would like to say that the Bible nowhere mentions the sinner's prayer. Uh, those who taught to pray for forgiveness are already Christians and maybe that's where they got that from but these people were already Christians 
Acts 8, 13, Acts 22. Um, and when uh, those to whom John writes in 1 John 1, 6 and 10, okay, and again in Revelation 3, 20, often you should support the idea of receiving Jesus through prayer and prayer alone. I'm giving you scriptures where they uh, are trying to uh, have a foundation for the sinner's prayer. These people have already been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, Acts uh, 8.13, 8.22, and, and of course, Revelation 3.20, and how they are trying to support the idea. And that's how false teachers are. They go to the Word of God, pick something out of the Word, and make a foundation. But it won't stand because it's not, uh, if they use the Word just like Satan did, in the Garden of Eden, they put the whole entire human race into sin. He told Eve when he tempted her to be disobedient that you eat of that tree, you should not. Should. Eve said, Well, the Lord said, We'll die. He said, Well, yeah, you know, you, you're not going to surely die. You're not going to really die. But see, that's how the enemy does. And I, and this is the purpose of this broadcast to bring light on that darkness to let you know yes he will take the word of God and twist it and he even did it with Jesus when he tempted Jesus he knew the word he knew uh, what the father would do he tempted him to do this and do that and then and Jesus had the word of God because he knew the word Sometimes you don't know enough of the word. Even pastors in the pulpit, they don't have a many of them don't have the revelation. That's why you have to know how to rightly divide. Sit up on a Holy Ghost teaching preacher uh, that have been baptized in Jesus' name, living godly for God. So to receive Christ, so that we we know Him, must uh, we must also receive what He has taught. The gospel message becomes perverted at one point when a person desires to receive Christ is told to simply say the sinner's prayer. And boom, you saved. You die right now. You go to heaven. And it's nowhere in the, and again, the sinner's prayer is not founded. I did give you some scriptures where they try to base it, but it 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 is not founded in the word of God. It is perverted. It is a perverted gospel. Jesus taught himself the message of the gospel of Christ. Jesus taught himself, taught us himself, taught the disciples himself. We believe that he is the Christ, the Son of God. We must repent of our sins, Luke 13, 3, Luke 24, 46 through 47. We uh, must be not be ashamed of him. And willing to confess him as Lord and Savior before others. We must be baptized to be saved. Mark 16, 6, 16, 15, 16. Unless a man is born of water and spirit, <laughs> he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. So, and so Jesus taught that you have to obey. You have to express faith. You have to repent. You have to confess. And you have to receive the Holy Ghost. And you have to be baptized. Note all the apostles taught the same things. Uh, Paul taught Christ is the author and the finisher, the eternal, the author of the, our eternal salvation, who we are to obey him. Um, therefore, we must believe that Jesus, believe Jesus and His Word. And in my conclusion, I would like to say, repentance and baptism are acts of faith to receive salvation, not works or merit to earn salvation, not faith alone. Definitely not saying the sin of prayer. Okay. How you know God, how you know it's a perverted gospel in telling people to say the sinner's prayer automatically, automatically and just inviting them into your heart. You don't have to get baptized. You don't have to do anything. You just believe. And that's, that's, that's a perverted gospel. I can work, you can work your way through heaven. That's a perverted gospel. 
A lot of people aren't getting baptized no more. A lot of them, definitely a lot of them don't want us to receive the Holy Ghost. But now you know, I've brought throughout scriptures what Jesus says. Now you know what the apostle says. Now you know about the perverted gospels that are out there. Have you received Christ through faith in putting him on in baptism in the name of Jesus? Have you received the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues? Have you turned from your old life of sin and now walking in the life of the Spirit? Acts 2.38, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. You have been listening to Continue for the Faith Broadcast. For the Faith Broadcast, this has been your honored host, Evangelist Serena White.